As we've studied the life of Joseph with Scott Pauling, we've learned that this study isn't necessarily about Joseph, but instead about the God who was with Joseph, even in the darkest of circumstances. As you look at your own circumstances through the eyes of faith, do you recognize God's presence? Oh, that we could learn to live in the presence of God. Be sure to stay tuned after today's study to learn more about Scott's book on the life of Joseph entitled, The Lord Was With Joseph. In the famines of life, some things die and other things live. And when you study the famine that Joseph and his family endured in the book of Genesis, what you're going to discover is that during that famine, fleshly schemes all died. Uh, Dad's carnality, God brought him to the end of himself. The uh, brother's envy and jealousy and fleshliness, uh, their hatred for their brother Joseph, all of that put to death. People are brought to the end of themselves in the famine. But at the exact same time that is taking place, God was powerfully working in the life of Joseph to bring to, to fruition a greater faith and greater blessing, and uh, exceeding abundantly above all that he could ask or think in the words of Scripture. That's what God does in the midst of the famine. So uh, we studied last in Genesis chapter 41. If you'll take the time on your own to read Genesis 42 through Genesis 47, you'll see the progression of those years of famine, what God does in restoring the relationship between Joseph and his brothers, the reconciliation between Joseph and his father. It is just a a beautiful picture of God doing what only God can do. And when you come to Genesis chapter number 48, you come to one of the most tender scenes in all of Scripture. It is the occasion where Jacob, Joseph's father, calls for Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, because he wants to bless them before he dies. It's an amazing chapter. I want to read just a little of it to you today, and I want you to see the boys and the blessing. And This is what God did for Joseph in the midst of the famine. While everybody else was just trying to find food, and the brothers were fearing for their life, and father was worrying over the future, Joseph was receiving from God every good thing that faith brings. Listen to Genesis chapter number 48, beginning in verse number 3. Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. In other words, what granddad is saying is God promised me that he would extend fruitfulness and family and give us a future. And I didn't know how he was going to do it. Jacob is confessing now, this was not my plan, this was not my idea, but this is what God chose to do. In Egypt, through difficult circumstances, through unforeseen obstacles, God was working to fulfill his promise. Uh, The boys come into the room, and in verse 8, Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Do you hear the the faith in Joseph's answers? They're not just my sons. No, no, they're my sons whom God hath given me in this place. You know, in a very real sense, that's true of all children. You think all the way back to the Garden of Eden, and Eve has a baby, and she brings Cain into the world, What does she say? I have gotten a man from the Lord. Uh, What did the psalmist say? Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Uh, So in a very real sense, every child is God's gift. But these sons, now these sons were, were symbols of the faithfulness of God. These boys represented the great truth, and it was this, that while everybody else was taking, God was giving. Listen to the phrase again. 
They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. I love Israel's response in verse 11. Israel, that is Jacob, said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. Isn't that just like our Lord to exceed expectations? Verse 15, And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And here's the end of the chapter, verse 20. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he said, Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Do you see what God was doing in the midst of the famine? Here we are now at the end. You know, everything is clearer at the end, isn't it? But at the end of the famine and at the end of Jacob's life, at the end of the story in Genesis chapter number 48, You see the boys, that's Manasseh and Ephraim, and you see something even grander than that. You see the blessing. It's not just the blessing of Jacob. It's the blessing of Jehovah. It is the blessing of heaven. It is God's favor. And friend, you can't put a price tag on the favor of God. You can't buy it. There's no substitute for God's blessing, and there's no shortcut to it. Joseph knew the blessing because he exercised faith in God and obeyed what God gave him to do. Let me give you just a handful of thoughts today from Genesis 48. You know, most people spend their whole life concentrating on what they've lost, uh, what was taken away from them, what they, what they can't have, what they don't get. Instead, Genesis 48 brings us back to what Joseph does have and what we have. It begins in verse 3 with God's power. The first words out of Jacob's mouth are these, God Almighty. Not our power, we have God's power. Praise God for that. Uh, We not only have God's power, we have God's peace. Oh, do you see how God in the midst of, of war and struggle brings peace through these two boys, Manasseh and Ephraim, God's gifts in a very difficult place. Uh, They have God's provision. Uh, The Bible says that the same blessing that was upon Abraham and Isaac was now extended to Jacob and to Joseph. In fact, it was an exceeding blessing a provision that God gave to them. All of these wonderful things are connected to the life that is lived by simple faith in God. Can I encourage you today to concentrate not on what you lost or what you don't have or what you can't get, but instead concentrate on who you do have, and that's the Lord, and then what God has brought into your life, the boys and the blessing, the tangible things, the people that God has brought into your life, and then uh, the, the untangible, the things that you can't exactly explain. It's just the favor of God. It's the goodness of the Lord. It is the presence of God in the life that trusts the Lord. May the Lord help you today, even in your famine, to live in the blessing of Genesis 48. As believers, we long for the day that we see the Lord and forever will be in His presence in heaven. But friend, you and I do not have to wait until then to live in the presence of God. In Joseph's life, we are reminded that the Lord desires that we stay in His presence throughout each day and in every circumstance. This was the open secret of Joseph's life. Scott has a tremendous resource that will equip you to live in God's presence. His book on the life of Joseph, entitled, The Lord was with Joseph. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org forward slash Joseph to download the free digital book, access the audio book, or purchase the hard copy version. Our prayer is that this will inspire your daily walk with the Lord.